everybody, it's Dennis from Power Auto Media. We're here at PRI 2015 with my friend Dick Boyer from Urson Cams. It's so good to see you, but you know, before we get into what's new at Urson Cams, let's talk a little bit about the rich history that Urson Cams has in this great industry. Yeah, Urson Cams was, this, was formed in 1964 by Sig Urson, one of the original camshaft designers from way back in the day. Lots of national championships in Top Fuel and Top Fuel Funny Car. Just a rich history in the, in the hot rod world. It's great to have that brand under the umbrella with you because it's something that you really take pride in. I mean, when you have that name on your shirt, it has to emit a, a great sense of pride for you personally. Absolutely. It's great to be part of a, a, such a rich tradition as Urson Camshafts. But you know what? We're stepping into the future, and so is Urson Cams. You know, LS Motors, modular Fords, and even late Hemis. Let's talk about some of that new technology coming to the Urson family. That's right, Dennis. It's 2015 now, and, and Urson is developing new lobes for the modular Ford, which have a lot of constraints on valve trains, uh, valve train parts. Valve springs are an issue. Nobody really, there's no room really in the engine for a valve spring. So you have to design lobes that are low lift and real fast opening and real long duration to make that engine work. I was going to say, let's talk about a little bit about the technology that goes in that, because it's really going against everything that Urson Cams has known for so many years. Not that it, they don't know it, it's just a whole new playing field for what you guys are doing. Yeah, the limitation on the valve springs is really new for us. We're used to having to figure out a way to get the valve open faster and farther. With the, uh, with the 464 Fords, you've got to find a, a program or a lobe that's designed to open the valve quickly, but not you know, about 500 lift on a, on a 46544 is all you can get. So it's, it's a whole new lobe design for us, and we've developed a lot of nice lobes, making a lot of power with the turbo guys, as well as the natural aspirated guys. It's, uh, we've got some really new stuff for the 4654. I was going to ask you about, with power adders, do you approach that design differently when you work with these guys who have that type of motor? Absolutely. The real nice thing about a um, one of these engines is you can actually change the cam timing and so forth on the twin cam stuff without having to regrind the cam. That, that is a big advantage for this deal. So yeah, there are a lot of different things that we're doing with that. Uh, the low profiles have to be different. The lobe separation has to be different. So all that stuff comes into play, yeah. What's some of the new technology you're seeing? Now, we just talked about the Ford modulars. Let's talk about maybe the LS or the, the late Hemi stuff about what that over, you know, what, what, what hurdles are there to overcome with those motors? Absolutely. The LS design is, um, the, one of the reasons that the LS makes so much power is because of that great big cam core they have. Back when we were doing small block Chevrolets, which is basically what the LS replaced, you were very limited on how much lobe lift you could put in. It's just the opposite of the 4654 Ford. We can put tons of lobe lift in an LS, and you can put a 525, a 550 lobe on an LS lobe because of that 55 millimeter cam core. So some of the older profiles that we used to run on the top fuel funny car stuff, 525 lobes, will actually fit right on that LS core. So we can really build some really, really bad, crazy stuff for the, for the LS engines. Well, lastly, let's talk about those late Hemis because, you know, Chrysler, as far as electronically, made them hard to crack into, but people are starting to get the hang of it. Let's talk about cams with those late Hemis. Uh, the Chrysler Hemi has a very similar problem as the uh, 4654 Fords. They have limited amount of valve spring that you can put in the engine. So there again, some of the lobes that we designed for the 4654 Ford, we modify those a small amount to put them on that Chrysler Hemi core. Now the Chrysler Hemi core is also very large like the 55 millimeter um, LS deal. So some of the designs that we make for that have a really, really broad nose on them. Almost look like a square lobe with rounded edges. So. One of the things that we needed to make sure and talk about was those 4654 Fords and the camshafts and the regrinding. Let's talk about one of the cam cores that you have here and what you're doing differently. Right, a lot of people regrind the 4654 Fords because of the limit on the, on the lift, you really don't have to change much on the lobe height. But uh, one of the problems with that is those cam cores are made out of powdered metal and they crack after you regrind them. So the new cam cores we have at Urson are actually a billet core, so there's no cracking um, of any sort when we grind the cam. Wow, well, you know what? It's great to see Urson take control of the future with what's going on with the historic past and now driving into the future. People want more information about Urson Cams and more about these late model stuff that you guys are doing. How do they do it? They can go to pbm-urson.com. There you go. More from PRI right here, 2015 Power Auto Media.